So in this video, we're gonna look at how to create a quick and simple start scene that will allow your player to begin your game and or quit your game. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new scene. So I'm gonna go up to File, New Scene. In this new scene, it's only gonna be UI. And again, the goal of these videos is not to make an attractive UI, we're just going for basic functionality. So I'm gonna Create, UI, Panel. And again, that added in my canvas and my event system for me. I might change my color here, something a little more like that. And I don't really want my skybox sh showing through like that, so I am going to increase my alpha so that it's not transparent. That's not the only way to do that. Uh, you can still have transparent alphas by changing your camera, but we're gonna keep it nice and simple. Next thing we're gonna do, go into our scene view, zoom in a little bit here, and I'm gonna add in some text. I'm gonna size this up. Maybe this is just my title. I'm gonna call it best game ever. And I'm gonna best fit that. And I'm gonna make that a lot larger. Let that maybe even, maybe 150. I'm gonna change my color and there we go. Now we've got a title. Next I wanna add in a couple buttons and I'm gonna add in a button that's gonna start my game and I'm gonna add a button that's gonna quit my game. So I'm gonna go to my panel, right click, go to UI and select button. I'm gonna size that up, just make it a little bit bigger, center it. And then I'm gonna duplicate that button and drag that button down like so. And then again with each button, I'm gonna go choose my UGUI, anchors to corners, anchors to corners, and I forgot, let's do it on our title as well. I'm gonna open up my buttons and you can see here that they have a child that's a text object. I'm gonna type in start game. I'm gonna do the best fit option as well. On the second button, I'm gonna call this, we're gonna type in quit game and hit best fit. I'm also gonna rename my buttons, start and quit. So before we wire up these buttons, we need to tell Unity what scenes are gonna be in our game. Since I just created a new scene, I'm gonna go up to file and I'm gonna save this scene. And I'm gonna call it start scene. Next, I need to come up here to build settings. And here in this box is where we tell Unity what scenes are gonna be in the final build of our game. And we need to have our scenes in there to be able to load them. This is how Unity loads our scenes. So for simplicity, I can hit add open scenes, and now it added my start scene. And you'll see here a number, this is our index. We're gonna use this later in our flow graph. This is the number or the index of our scene. I'm also gonna come over here to assets, and I'm gonna drag in my demo scene. And this is the scene that I had my player running around with the collectibles and the platform that was moving. And again, you can see that our index has increased. That's gonna be scene number one. I'm not gonna push any buttons, I'm just gonna close that out. And now I'm gonna come back to my start button. Now we can add in the flow graph. So I'm gonna add in the flow machine. Then I'm gonna to come to macros. I'm gonna right click, create, bolt, flow macro. And I'm gonna call this start underscore UI. Again, I like to indicate that it's a UI element. In here, once again, we're gonna be looking for that on click event that we used before in a previous video. And this just gets called whenever the button is clicked. In this case, when we start, we wanna load a scene. We wanna load our level. So I'm gonna come over here and just type load scene. And the option I want, I like, is this one here with the load scene by build index. That means I can just type in a number. You can go by scene name and that's great. I don't like to type in strings because it's really easy to uh, make have a typo, misspell something, or if you change the name of your scene, you gotta come back in and change that. So I'm gonna add that in. And then here our option is what index to load. And I just wanna load scene one. So now we need to attach our flow graph to our start button. So in the hierarchy, click on the start button, drag that start UI macro, scroll down here and drop it into that flow machine. Now let's see how this works. We'll push play. And if I click on the start game button, it transitions me into my other scene and everything's working as expected. Next, let's work on the quit button. So in the macros folder, I'm going to right click, create, bolt, flow macro, and I'm gonna create a new macro called quit underscore UI. And just like before, I want that on click events. And in this case, I just wanna quit the application. If I search for quit, there we go, application.quit. And that's all there is to it. That's all you need for a quit button. Now, if your game needs some sort of save functionality, you wanna show an exit screen, it needs to be more complex than that, but this is how it works. So let's attach that to our quit button, just like we did with the start button. We're gonna add a flow machine and drag in our flow macro. 
Now, if I test this here in Unity, it's not gonna work. This application quit only works when you have a standalone build of your game. So I'm showing how to do this just in case because it's a useful thing to have a quit button, but it's not gonna work here in the Unity editor. So there you go, we've created a simple start scene that has a start game button and a quit game button. In the next video, we'll look at creating a button that will toggle on an options menu that will give the player the option of reloading or restarting the level that they're currently playing. So I hope that was helpful and I hope to see you next time.